Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and to the first in-depth review of the Van Rysel D100 Zwift Edition Direct Drive Smart Trainer. This is the D100 Trainer with the Zwift COG version 2 pre-installed for use with virtual shifting on Zwift. As this is the cheapest Zwift ready direct drive smart trainer on the market, I was very interested to see how it performs. Does this trainer with its budget price and somewhat limited features result in a less than ideal experience on the bike that will leave you wondering, should you have spent a little bit more on a different trainer? So with that line, you could probably guess this is not an advertorial for Decathlon. No, it's an actual review of this trainer. The way I can bring you these reviews is with support of viewers like you here on YouTube. So please hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out here on the channel. And with that, let's get to the technical specifications of the D100 Zwift Edition. Okay, kicking off with what we'd expect from a direct drive smart trainer, support for SIM mode, ERG mode, has electromagnetic resistance. The connectivity is Bluetooth FTMS only. So no AMP plus, no Wi-Fi, no wired connection. That also means no control via your bike computer for indoor workouts with no AMP plus FEC. So Bluetooth only for the D100 and D100 Zwift Edition. Bike compatibility out of the box, quick release 130, 135, also through axle bikes, including the Zwift ride frame. The free hub is a Shimano HG free hub, but that really doesn't matter because it comes pre-installed with the Zwift COG version 2 for virtual shifting, which works across multiple group sets. Power accuracy plus or minus 5%, maximum power 600 watts, and maximum incline of 6%. The calibration and spin down is manual. The app recommends you do it every two weeks or so, so it doesn't have auto calibration. And now we're into the things that it doesn't have, which is quite an extensive list. Those being no cadence, no race mode, 10 hertz power reporting, no sensor bridging, no odometer, no pivoting rear axle mounts, so no support for front climbing elevators, and no carry handle. The trainer management app is one lap fit, which you can update firmware with, configure the settings, and it also has some basic control as well. So if you have no software subscriptions on something like Zwift, then you can still use this trainer for basic control with that one lap fit app. It's also where you perform your manual calibration or spin downs too. The unit weight comes in at just under 10 kilos and power is via mains power. So there's no question where this trainer is positioned in the market. It's very light on features and very light on price for a direct drive smart trainer. Speaking of pricing online via Decathlon, Euro $299.99 and pounds $259.99. Now both of those include the Zwift COG version 2 pre-installed, the Zwift Click and two months of Zwift for new users. Unboxing and assembly is as expected for a budget level smart trainer. You do have to do a little bit of work putting the legs on yourself after you read the manual to find out what goes where. The updated click also comes in the box. That's very handy. All the adapters and things and spaces to measure your bike if you need to measure out your bike. The legs themselves are labeled and the trainer does come with quick release which you'll need to convert over to through axle if you have a through axle bike. It doesn't come with the tools to do that conversion though. So that's what you get with budget. Saves them a few dollars not putting those tools in the box. Okay, legs on in just a few moments. Not as easy as the Jet Black Victory with the nuts actually being welded to the legs. It's a very good addition, I think. And we are good to go. Yep. See, labels done. Left, left. Right, right. Can't get those two wrong. And once sorted out, Swift Ride goes straight on. 142 through axle is the Zwift ride requirement there. Quick sound check. The trainer itself is quiet. You'll hear a little bit from the drive train, but that's about it. All right, good to go. When first pairing the trainer as a power source via Bluetooth, Zwift will also pair as a cadence sensor to the Van Rysel D100. Now this is a little strange. It doesn't report cadence. It seems to report cadence as a service, but it doesn't do anything. So something they'll need to address to either add cadence or remove the broadcasting service. A requirement of virtual shifting is to have some controllers paired. So the Zwift Ride is paired there over Bluetooth. We can then pair a heart rate monitor and away we go. So all up, as you heard before, the trainer is relatively quiet. I had no issues with stability of the D100 using it with the Zwift ride frame. I found the responsiveness of sim gradient changes, virtual gear changes, and erg interval set point changes were relatively fast over that Bluetooth connection. And erg mode stability was excellent, holding me right at that trainer set point of 200 watts and then 250 watt steady state during that Llama lab test with no problems at all. To talk more about the experience of having a trainer with that 600 watt maximum power limitation, it's not just peak power sprints that it affects you. Here is me getting out of the saddle, pushing pretty hard, I wouldn't call it a sprint, 
trying to go for this green jersey on the coastal road. Now up out of the saddle, as soon as I push down the pedal, in gear 24, I pushed through that resistance, and then when I tried to spin up and achieve that, uh, what's the 27.95, uh, a little faster than that, the sprint was just capped or nerfed by that limitation of resistance. Definitely something to be aware of if you're known to jump out of the saddle and put down a few watts. Maybe you drop from a bunch and you want to sprint back on the back. This trainer might just have other ideas for you if you do that. When it does come to all-out sprints, let's have a look at how the trainer performs with the side profile shot here. Just finishing off my 250 watt steady state in the Llama Lab test. Now the line on screen there is perfectly flat because it's doing erg mode smoothing. And once that pops out into sim mode, I'll do a maximal sprint. Once the gear changes, defaults to gear 5 I think it is. Okay. Gear 24, I'm still spinning through that pretty easily, and it's up now for a sprint. Hitting 600 watts very, very quickly, spinning out within a few pedal strokes, pushing through, and the trainer then capping that at 600 watts. You'll see in the data sets in a moment what that actually looks like on the pedals versus the trainer. But pushing through that 600 watts, very, very easy to do if your sprint power is a little higher than 600 watts. Okay, from sim mode limitations into erg mode limitations and something the Llama lab test protocol discovered about this trainer which was quite surprising and that's its maximum set point in erg mode. My interval here is an erg mode step test, two minutes long, stepping up from 100 watts up to 635 watts, 15 second increments. You can see the trainer here in its working zone, its good working zone. Holding those watts just fine, my heart rate's rising. Well, it rises all the way through, it's a step test. And Every 15 seconds, that set point is stepping up and stepping up. Okay, 410 on the pedals. That's all looking good. We'll go through this data in just a few moments about what it looks like with two power meters. But here's the experience on the bike. 410, about to step up to 480, 485. And the train is unable to match the set point sent to it by the control, that being Zwift. Topping out 445, 448, 446. We're about to go to another set point change. That then goes to 560. The trainer does not respond. I've hit that limit in erg mode, which is below that 600 watt maximum. It's going to step up again in 5, 4, 3, 2. It'll go up to 635 watts, and the set point doesn't move. So what I found over multiple ramp tests like this is that the D100 is limited in its erg mode set point. For a rider set to 78 kilos in game, that's all you're going to get out of it. Now, I'd mention rider weight because a lot of these specifications we see on the side of a box and on the spec sheets are based on rider weight of around 75 kilos, sometimes 70 kilos. So it could be that the trainer has the capability of holding a lot higher in erg mode for a lighter rider. Something I'll need to dig into another day. All in all, the overall ride feel of this trainer was fine. Stepping off the bike, I didn't feel any more fatigued than a normal training session. If a trainer has really, really poor inertia and I'm having to change my pedal stroke to generate the watts, I get off the trainer and I feel, well, terrible. Okay, now onto the data analysis of the D100 over three different rides. First up, my power meter of choice here as the trusted comparative baseline is the Asiyama Duo power meter pedals. I now have over 900 data sets comparing Asiyama power meter pedals to other power meters. They have such a good track record for what I do, and that's the reason why I use them here. Now with power meter pedals being universally compatible with almost any bike, including the Zwift Ride for this testing, they were installed in under a minute. I set the crank length to 170 millimeters, which is the crank length of the Zwift Ride bike, performed an initial installation calibration and called it done. The auto calibration on the Asiyama power meter pedals means there's no need to do any further manual zeroing or as Garmin call it, calibrating before your rides. Three data sets to go through with the D100. I'll try and keep it brief because it's been quite the journey over just three data sets on this trainer. Okay, Asiyo Maggio up against the Van Rysel D101. Warm-up performed over the first 10 minutes and then into the lower erg states, into my normal steady states. Now I'll skip over those for now to keep this brief, but what we can see on the screen is that it wasn't quite lining up as expected. Plus or minus 5% and the trainer is well, it's overreading compared to the pedals. The blue there, the pedals, which is exactly what I'm doing. The trainer there, flatlining with erg set point and erg mode smoothing. 
at 200 and 250. One thing of note, I did have erg smoothing turned off. It still turned itself on and remained on, regardless of what I did with that toggle switch. Anyhow, that wasn't great, to be honest. When it comes to the sprints, as you saw in the video just before, this thing cannot sprint. It's limited to 600 watts. That's all it will report, although that flywheel will enable you to push more than 600 watts, obviously with the pedals. It slowly decays down to, well, if my legs could hold out, it would have got to around 600 and stayed there. If you're a sprinter, this is not a trainer for you, but it's meeting technical specifications, probably exceeding them, but it doesn't report any further than that. So sprints, I'm not gonna be too harsh on. However, that steady state in 200 and 250 early on really wasn't to my liking. So I pulled out the app and did a spin down and the spin down told me it wasn't within range that it should have been and to get out a three mil hex key and adjust the belt tension clockwise. Is that, yeah, got it clockwise. And given I had the Asiomas on the bike, I had a trusted source I could compare it to. So over the next, oh, what was that, uh, 13 minutes it took me, I performed a number of smaller tests with manually calibrating with this. I wanted to know how close I could get it. Now this shouldn't be required out of the box, but the app told me these were the steps to take. I took them and got the trainer within pretty close specs. So first up here, not quite matching. Second one, now to truly mess with things, I actually turned it anti-clockwise to see if it would reduce the number, and it did. Turned it back the other way, not quite right. Turned it back again, almost there. And then I got it pretty much spot on. Here is just a small section of the Llama lab test here. 223, 26 on the pedals, 224 on the D100. Bingo. We've got it reading right. Although it took a little bit of this, but following the instructions, we got it there. And from there, it was into the overs and unders, the flywheel speed test, step test, and a couple of more llama lab tests. Let's dig into the overs and unders. Now I've tweaked the calibration. Not too bad. The data's probably off by about one second there with that recording interval being one hertz. But it brought me from 150, it was really good at 150, up to 350. Back down to 150, up to 350 again. Short little spike at the start of each interval there indicates the trainer is changing that resistance really quick. Typically on very low end trainers, they take a few seconds, maybe even 10 seconds to come up to that new set point. This thing, bang, it changed the watts and it was good. There's a bit of a question mark around the accuracy near that 400 zone, but I'll dig more into that later. This is the beauty of the Llama lab test. It really reveals areas where we need to poke and prod a little bit more to see how our trainer truly performs. This is one area right here. So not too bad for the overs and unders. Onto the flywheel speed test, which is performed a little differently with virtual shifting. On a geared bike with a cassette on the back, I just simply change down through the gears and spin that flywheel up uh, at 90 second intervals. With uh, virtual shifting, I need to do this via cadence, not gearing. So about 60 RPM, the unit was overreading just a little bit, but again, within spec. At 80 to 85 RPM, spot on, that's its sweet spot working zone. And at about 100 RPM, it was under reporting a little bit. But look, overall, I mean, that data point I've picked out right there, not cherry picked, that's just where I drag my finger. Uh, 229 on the pedals, 225 from the Van Rysel. Plus or minus 5%, you're in spec. Now to that ramp test, which was capped. Uh, <laughs> I actually love doing these ramp tests on this because it didn't hurt too much at the higher end. Starting off at sub 100 into 105, 180, around 255, and stepping up from there, and it starts to get away from those working zones about here, here, and definitely here where the trainer is no longer able to provide any resistance above 450 or 460. So again, the Llama lab test there, uncovering the true performance of that trainer, indicating here, that sweet spot working zone, you're looking at around 100 watts to maybe around 300 or so for ERG. Anything outside those zones, you're really not gonna be within spec. And then lastly, with this test, just returning back to 200 watt steady state to see if anything had changed or offset shifted, and things are looking good there through the 200 watt steady state for uh, two minutes. On to data set number two and the follow-up ride after tweaking that calibration with the three mil hex key. Early on, things were looking fantastic. Here's the warm-up, bit of a solid warm-up here with a couple of out-of-the-saddle efforts, uh, nothing past 600 watts. 148 on the pedals, 146.42 on the trainer. That's looking really, really good. However, when I returned to the Llama Lab Test 200 watt steady state, it wasn't as good as where I'd left it. 193.93 on the pedals, let's call it 194 watts. 200 watts, set point reporting, so erg mode smoothing on the D100. Now plus or minus 5%, call it a day, it's within spec, but I did see better data than that. So another full turn clockwise and 
we returned to a perfect working state. 200 into 250 watt here, 232 on the pedals, 234 on the trainer, well within spec, that's fine. Holding that erg mode nice and smooth, so no major oscillations, no drifting. The sprint, well, we know it's not going to sprint over 600 watts, although physically with that flywheel, yes, you can push through 600 watts and above until the trainer brings you back down to what it's capable of holding sustainably. Into the overs and unders again, and looking a lot cleaner this time as I ride very smooth into those erg mode transitions. And again, this performs exceptionally well for 150 into 350, 150 again, and into the 450s, although not quite meeting that 450 set point up here. So those intervals at 450 are just pushing the limits of this trainer a little bit too much in erg. Flywheel speed test, 225 watts erg, changing the cadence from 60 to 85 to around 110. Same as the previous test, reporting a little over from the trainer here, pretty close to spot on. And the trainer reporting a little bit lower than the pedals during 110 RPM. Onto my favorite step test, because it doesn't actually go any higher than 450 watts, even though it's told to, it can't, so I can get through these pretty easily. Same data as we had in the previous test, data set number one, indicating the working zone for this is between, say, 150 to 300 watts. And finishing up, we'll have a look at just this sim mode section riding along through here. 182, 96, 183, that's very close between the pedals and the D100. The data is obviously unsmooth, so it's very jagged here on screen, but all is looking pretty good, but it did require that second tweak of the belt. Which brings us to the third and final data set, a Llama Lab test short, with everything tweaked, everything working, and this, look, to be honest, this was phenomenal, where things are at with this trainer now. A pretty solid warm up with some out of the saddle efforts, nothing over 600 watts. Starting off here, I'll grab this uh, 196, 194, so what, within two or three watts there. That's a pretty good start to that session. Now it's in this third data set that I will dive into the 60, 80, 100, 120 watt erg sections. Now I put this section in as an indication of how this trainer works for people who aren't pushing massive watts. And the answer is, it's not too bad. At 60, it's under reporting a little bit. 80, the same again. 100, trainer under-reporting, just a small amount. And then as we get to 120, it really starts to come into its own and into that proper working window. But overall, not too bad for those lower levels. It definitely was changing resistance levels. On a trainer that performs extremely poorly for this, you just won't see any steps at all, or it'll be wildly out, over or under. That's not too bad. Into the 200 and 250 watt steady state. And if you were to tell me this was a budget direct drive smart trainer, I wouldn't believe you. 223.64, 223.10, that is absolutely brilliant. And also we're not seeing any major oscillations or any drifts up or down. Look, overall, when I'm smooth on the pedals, pedaling through that erg, the D100, bang, held me in that set point. Sprints, which is always amusing on this trainer because it's limited to 600 watts. Same as what we saw before, I can push over 600 on the pedals as that physical flywheel spins up, and it will slowly bring me back down to what it's capable of holding. Now, just here, I kicked up the cadence again, so I accelerated the flywheel, and it gave me a little bit more on the pedals, but there wasn't much there. It eventually comes down to around 600. It's not gonna hold much more than that. So again, this is not a sprinter's trainer. Into the overs and unders, and yes, this is the third set of these we've had a look at on this trainer, but this is when it's optimally calibrated and things are looking absolutely brilliant. So again, those little spikes at the start indicate that it is punching that set point change. It's not lazy, it's not laggy. Brings me up to 350 from 150, just fine. Again, 450, a little bit under, but we're just pushing outside the zones for that. Flywheel speed test, same as all the others. So it's good to see consistency there. My favorite ramp test, which caps out at 450 or 460 watts and goes no higher. Same data as before, sweet spot or the Goldilocks zone for this trainer between 100, 150, up to around 350. From there, you're getting outside that working zone. And returning back to a 200 watt steady state in ERG to check if anything had changed, shifted, drifted, and no, everything remained the same. So 201.73 on the pedals, 200 on the trainer. To be honest, that was pretty impressive to see. Alrighty, so the D100 Zwift Edition pretty much meets my expectations when considering the technical specifications and the price. Look, if that power accuracy was as good out of the box as it is now with a little tweaking, I would have been a lot more impressed. However, that third data set does show what the D100 is capable of when optimally calibrated. Now, the one thing I can't answer though is the accuracy of any other D100 unit out of the box. 
Those maximum power limitations in SIM seems to pretty much meet specifications, though I would have expected a little more out of ERG mode, referring to that 450, 460 watt ceiling. Although any steady state effort over 400 watts in ERG is gonna provide a pretty good workout for most of us. Although the connectivity options are limited to Bluetooth only, that performed extremely well during my testing. I would, however, like to see cadence added or removed from broadcasting as it might confuse new users in thinking that it reports cadence, they pair to it, and get no data. For someone looking to try Zwift for the very first time on a direct drive smart trainer with virtual shifting, this is gonna be a pretty good starting point. However, if you're pushing some really good watts and wanna dabble in some friendly Zwift races online, maybe compete for that green jersey sprint in game during a free ride, you'll need to look at spending a little bit more money and consider something like the Jet Black Victory or the Wahoo Kicker Core One trainers. Now the win here for Decathlon will be obviously their distribution and availability. The win for newcomers is the cost of entry, that being buying a brand new direct drive smart trainer is lower than it ever has been before. So my wrap up on this one, the D100 Zwift Edition is a budget direct drive smart trainer with budget features that performs very well within its working window or within its published specifications. Although it's targeted at an entry level cyclist, if you're not doing sprints or VO2 workouts indoors, maybe indoors is all zone two for you and it's more than capable of doing that. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. If you have any further questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in the video below here on YouTube and I'll do my best to get back to you. And with that, thanks for watching.